this video, we're going to go over a bunch of different ways to identify why you're getting error six or use. So when you turn on your scale, you'll see it powers up and you'll get an error six as well as you use. It's very specific that the use are falling after or you're just getting consistent just error six. So it can be a number of things. So we're gonna go over different ways to identify and check your skill and make sure that it's working in good condition. So the first thing we're gonna wanna go over is the cable. So the main cable is very important. We wanna make sure that that's intact. It's one of the most frequent things to be damaged in a warehouse or outside environment. They tend to be stepped on, pulled on, and everything like that. Things drop on them and then you will end up with error six or use as you can see so we're going to pull out the cable here out of the back of the indicator and we're going to check it so checking it you're going to check to make sure the whole cable is in good condition as well as the cable heads in good condition and that it's plugged in properly in the junction box so first we're going to check the cable head so this black and silver part they come apart and it's soldered behind here to each of the individual pins. So we're gonna want to check to make sure that all the soldering points are in good condition. An example of a bad cable that is not gonna work would be this. Right here, you could see that the red cable is disconnected, but all the other ones are connected. So this is an example of a bad cable. This won't work, okay? as well as after you check the cable head, you're gonna to wanna to check all along the entire line here. An example of a bad cable line would be this. Someone has taped it or it's been, you know, severely chopped here. So behind here, you know, just sometimes this, this, is, this is a good fix for a power cable, but not for a scale cable. So if you take this off, you can take a look and see that probably one of the cable lines inside have been disconnected or damaged some way. And that's not good because if one of these cables inside of here are damaged, it's not gonna work at all. And you're gonna get error six, you're gonna get use, and you're not gonna have a functioning scale. Another, for some special scales, for some scales, they have a short cable that this main cable plugs into. It sort of looks like this in the front of your scale. It usually comes out in the front right here and it, it's set up right there. Sometimes that when, you know, something falls on the cable and it pulls on it, it pulls on this and it damage, damages this part. So you always want to check the back here for good connections as well as the cable going into the junction box. So for the junction box, you want to go ahead and open it up and just make sure that the cable isn't pulled out. Open this up. And we're gonna wanna take a look here inside the junction box. We wanna make sure all these cables for the home run port is in good condition. Make sure, pull on them a little bit and make sure they're nice and snug. You also wanna make sure that they're in above, in between uh, the clamp, not under the clamp. Sometimes it gets stuck under the clamp and that gives you a bad connection as well. So these are all good. So this cable's good. So if I plug this back in, and we're still getting error six, we're gonna go over another way to identify why we're getting error six. So let me close this back up and we will proceed on the next. I'm gonna plug this back in. Right. So we're still getting used even after we've checked the entire cable. So next, let's see if it's a bad calibration. Sometimes you'll get this and it's just a bad calibration. So we're gonna put, turn it off and then turn it back on and do holding unit. For a more extensive um, calibration video, check out our calibration video for this on YouTube, SL7515 calibration video. So I'm gonna do it kind of quick. I will still explain it, but I'm going to go a little quick. Here, we right now it's kg, we're gonna to go to pounds, and then push hold. We wanna make sure that's on F6 for custom. All the rest of them are presets. So we'll go ahead and push hold. Decimal point, 
We're gonna just put it zero. Right now we're just simply testing. We'll do one and then capacity we can do, let's just do 5,000 real quick. And then press hold and then load. We're gonna put 50 pounds on here. Let me grab a 50 pounder. Okay, now we'll press hold here, no load. And then hold, add load. And we'll put the 50 on. Again, this is just a test. So it doesn't need to be perfect. We're just testing to see if it's a bad calibration. And then count end. So right now we're not getting anything. Nothing at all. So we did get rid of the Air 6, but it's not showing anything for us now. We always want to make sure the hold's off and it's not doing anything. So there's still an issue that we need to look for. So now that we've tested the cable and we've tested a bad calibration, we're going to want to, you know, check and see and make sure that uh, you know all the load cells are connected properly. So now that we've gone over and checked to see if it was a bad calibration, we did see that you know the calibration did sort of take, but it's not responding in any way to um, us putting pressure on the scale. So there's still something wrong. We checked the cable, we checked the calibration. Now we're gonna check all the load cells and make sure all the load cells are put in properly. The color coding in here is We'll put it on the screen right now. It's uh, excitation plus red, signal plus is green, and then you have ground in the middle, and then you have signal minus is white, and then excitation minus would be black. That's usually E plus, S plus, ground, S minus, E minus. So you'll see that on your board going around, corresponding to each load cell port. And you just want to make sure all your cables are in there properly as well in the correct order as well as snug and properly in there so you're gonna pull them pull on them a little bit and make sure they're all nice and tight they're not loose or anything and that could also lead to an error six or use or you know in our case right now a non-responding scale so we'll go over each of the wires and pull on them a little bit make sure they're all Nice and tight. If any of them come out, obviously put them back in, make sure they're tight, and then proceed to calibr try calibrating it again. And we'll see if that works. So all my cables look good. So the next test we would have to do is we need to identify which load cell it could be. So we were gonna have to do an ohms test as well as manually checking so we can ohm each load cell so we're going to take out each load cell check the ohms and see what the ohms come out to if we will have one that's an odd ball out it's probably going to be that one and then we'll go over and do the uh, manual check as well that's where you wire one load cell and you default your indicator and you see you make sure each load cell is giving you a response and then most likely there will be one load cell that's not giving you a response and it will be that bad load cell. So let's uh, do the ohms test next. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the ohms test. So what you're gonna wanna do is have your ohm meter, uh, your multimeter here, and you're going to send this to 200K. And then you're gonna start undoing your load cells. So we're just gonna start with this one. And we're going to work our way around here. You're going to take out your wires here. And you're going to want to press together your black and red. And then your green are separate. So you're going to take your black. You're going to put it to these two. And then you're going to take oh, your green. Put it here.
and you should have the same value on both. So it looks like it's one. We can change this. 1.9. Perfect. So we have the value on that. So let's go to the next one and we'll see what we got on this one. So again, let's do red and black. So far, those two load cells do look good, so we'll go to the next one. Red and black here. And then your red to your green. 1.9, uh, 0.19. 0 0.19. So all three of these have been pretty consistent. Let's take a look at this last one. Green, 1.9, 1.8, 1.9. So this one's a little lower, 1.9. Green is showing 1 point, 0.18, sorry, 0 0.18 and 0.19. So it might be this load cell, this corner load cell, and we gotta figure out which load cell as far as in the scale it is, because there are four. So once we do the ohms, so we did the ohms test, all three of them came out pretty well. This one didn't come out too well, but this one's the only one that had the difference. So now that we've gone over checking your cables for area six issue, bad calibration for your area six issue, checking to make sure the load cells and everything were connected properly for your load cell issue, as well as the ohm tests, we're going to go over manually how to check for bad load cell without a multimeter. So you're going to turn the indicator on and you're going to factory reset it. So you're going to press the hold. You're going to press the on and off hold and unit button all at the same time during the countdown. So turn it on, then press all three like that, and you should get DEF zero. You're going to change it to one by pressing the unit and then press hold and it will factory reset your indicator. So that's normal. When the indicator does that, that means you just, you're not connected to anything. It's only connected to the J box. It's not connected to any load cells. So it's not going to hold to zero. So if you do see this, it's most likely your main cable, but I know the main cable is not good. Well, I know all our load cells aren't plugged in, so that's completely normal for it to do that. So we're going to go in manually putting in each load cell one at a time, and we'll see what kind of things the indicator does. So again, to reiterate the wire, the wiring is red is excitation plus green is signal plus and your middle wire is usually your ground it's going to be a bare wire like this or a yellow wire or it can also be a, a thick black wire or purple wire and then white is sig min minus And then your last wire, your fifth wire is excitation minus. So we're gonna put that in and we'll see what we get. So as you can see, the indicator is doing something now. So when I press the scale down, the numbers are moving in reaction to me pressing the scale down. So I know this load cell is good. Right now it's factory reset. There's no good calibration on it. So I know that that load cell is good still. So 
you can either disconnect it or you can just add on the next one. So we'll add on the next one and see and make sure that our indicator is still doing what it's doing at the moment, which is reacting to me putting my hand or resting my hands on the scale, lifting them up and it's consistent. So let's put in this one now. So we're going to put in this one. So on the J box, it's excitation minus sig minus ground sig plus and excitation plus. So it's backwards from this side. So we're going to go put that in and see what kind of results we get. Okay, it looks like it went back to use, but I haven't finished putting all the wires in. So let me complete the put all the wires in first and we'll see what we get. So that's normal the use because only partial of the wires are put in. So again, that's what we checked earlier to see, you know, to make sure the wires are put in properly or else you're going to have an error like this. And then the last wire is red. Good. Okay, so you see there the number is pretty, st it's not moving, which is good. If I put my hand on the scale, the numbers move. So that's a good load cell as well. So, so far, the, these two load cells that we did are good. Let's try this next one number three and now let's take a look so right now it's, it's, it's in a good spot it's only hovering between 0 0.05 which is okay if i put my hand on the scale the numbers move that's good so these three load cells are good let's put in this last one and see if it's this one perfect so now we're getting used and it's not working at all so Based off of that, I believe that this load cell is bad. So we're gonna change this load cell. Okay, so here we're gonna go ahead and flip the scale over and change our load cell. The items you'll most likely need is either a socket wrench like this. This is a 3 fourth socket, or you can use a drill, either one. I just have this. And then obviously your small screwdriver to change it in the junction box. So first, we're gonna disconnect from the J box. And we're going to figure out which load cell corner this is actually on. So we'll just unscrew it all here. We'll pull it out like that. And then we'll pull out the wire. And we'll figure out where that goes. So we can put all this back inside for now just so it doesn't get squashed when we can flip it over. So we see here we got four load cells where the feet are one, two, three, four. And so. Usually on the end of uh, the wire, you'll have a knot on it, identifying that it's the back load cell. So I believe it's this one, which it is. And then you're just gonna unscrew it here using your socket wrench or your drill. So you're going to have uh, a spacer here on the bottom and then your screws and washers. And then the bad load cell you can just put to the side and get uh, a new load cell. So here's our new load cell. We're going to go ahead and put our foot on now and then we will install it. So um, you want to just want to pay attention to the load cell. There is a notch here on the side of the load cell you can see here this goes towards the scale so it's going to go down like that and then this foot's going to come out so the foot's on the smooth side the scale is on the notch side okay i'm just going to screw it all the way down and then we'll adjust it and later so then 
I like putting the screws in first, so I'm gonna put in each screw here so I remember which side I'm putting it on. And then my spacer goes in between. And that's gonna go on the load cell block right here. So we're gonna put that down like that. And then thread in the bolts here. Thread it in. Try not to cross the thread. There you go. We may need some wiggle action. So once we got that in, we're gonna go ahead and tighten it up. And then we'll feed the, the wire through the mouse hole on the side, which I'll show you in a second. And then we'll put it in the junction box, wire it up, and then we'll see uh, what we got. So let me do this real quick. Perfect. Got it nice and tight. Undo the cable. And we will feed it through. So let me show you the mouse hole. So right there, where you want to feed the cable through. Okay, so we're going to put the cable through here. As you can see, it's already coming through, which is good. And then we'll pull it through on the other side. So let me lift it up. Cable's here, we're just gonna pull it through. Try not to pull it too hard and damage the cable. So I wanna feed it and pull it at the same time. So I have my cable here and this is my cable. So I'm gonna pull it and feed it at the same time. So I do not damage the cable. Okay, perfect. So now that we have our cable all the way through, we're going to flip it back over and we're going to wire it in the junction box. So now that we flipped over our scale and we have our cable out. We're going to wire it back into the junction box. Feel free to wrap up the cables so they're nice and neat. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take off this uh, little cap and we're going to feed the wire through first and then feed it into our junction box. And then tighten the cap on. And then we're going to wire it in. Again, wiring is excitation plus is red. Sig plus is green or S plus. then it's usually ground in the middle. It'll have G and D, or it'll have a ground symbol, or it'll be shield. And then sig minus is white. And then excitation minus is black. Great, now that you have all those in, we're gonna go ahead and plug it into our indicator that's still factory reset. And we'll take a look and see what we got. If we did everything right, and we, if we did identify, you know, the, the load cell to be bad, and this should either be zero or should be consistent. So it is zero, it's holding zero, which is good. If I put my hand on the scale, it's reacting to my hand on the scale. So it looks like we have a fixed indicator. All I need to do is to uh, have it calibrated. So we do have a video on how to calibrate this indicator. Again, this is the indicator model SL7515. So all you have to do is calibrate it, follow those steps in that video, and then you have fully functioning, you know, scale again. So 
In this video, we went over how to identify error six or use to a scale that was working, that is no longer working, or if it was never working, you know, these are the steps you want to take to, you know, fix it. You want to check your main home run cable. You want to check for damages. You want to check the cable head on the back of the, that connects to the back of the indicator. You want to make sure your wiring inside the junction box is correct. And you want to make sure that your calibration was good. So you can do a simple, you know, 50 pound calibration, or you can use your body weight. You can use your body weight as a hundred at a hundred pounds and try it that way. Or you're going to check the ohms. You're going to ohm read all the load cells and check it that way. Or you can do a manual check like we did by putting it in, in each individual load cell and checking that way. So I hope this video was helpful. If you do need any additional help, if you have any questions or if you need to contact us to get a new load cell for your scale, please give us a call or find us on the internet, celotonscales.com, or you can email info at celotonscales.com. Thank you very much.